Hi, I'm Tracy Lee Morley, um, and we're about to start the Regain Your Body workshop. Uh, we're just waiting for a few more people to arrive. Uh, this is a workshop, uh, the first of seven in a series, um, and you'll see the first 30 minutes of this workshop on effective strategies for long-term weight loss and um, a naturopathic approach. So stay, stay tuned as we get set up. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're live on Facebook for the first 30 minutes. Is there any more? How many more are left to come in? There's three. There's still three, yeah. So, now can everybody see the screen? Yes. That's fine. Four more. Okay. All right, well, maybe grab a seat and um, we'll just have to squeeze them in when, when they make it here. All right, so for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name's Tracy Morley. I'm actually a naturopath, a homeopath, a herbalist. Um, I've been in Port Macquarie for about 20 something years. Um, I've been doing this for probably 30 plus years. Um, so tonight is all about, this is a first uh, of a series of seven workshops based on effective, um, effective strategies for long-term weight loss. Right. So um, tonight is an overview of um, a naturopathic approach, a holistic approach and we actually have a practical part of this workshop where I'll be um, doing a VLA body composition test on everybody and you'll, get, and you'll get a report. And then we come back after the practical and I go through specific diets. Um, and so it's a very much an engaging workshop. Uh, this first part is a little bit more of a lecture. Uh, but after that, it's actually encouraging with you. I'll actually have a look at your reports and give you um, some tips and ideas. Now, did everybody get the questionnaire on the email? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Now, the questionnaire was aimed to help you sort of focus in on your goals. Like, what is it that you really want to achieve? And what do you think your hurdles are from actually achieving that? Okay. We can give you one in a little while. Okay. Um, and so combine the questionnaire with also the, um, the report that, that you're going to get tonight, you can build up some fairly good strategies of what is it that you really are aiming to do with your, with your weight loss. Yeah. So is there any questions before we get started? Does anyone want to ask anything? Is there anything in particular that people are hoping to get out of tonight? Just general? <laughs> yep. Okay. More body. And the smaller body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kick okay. the diabetes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll be going over some statistics with diabetes and more importantly, pre and also pre-diabetes. Mm. Right. All right. With, um, with 80% of people that are successful in losing weight, within five years, they put it all back on. So it's actually looking at, okay, why is this happening, you know? So we'll be going through the first part. I'll be actually talking about, yeah. Um, the first part, of, I'll actually be going through some of the research and talking about set point. Has anyone heard of set, your body's set point? Any? A few people, yeah. And the most important thing is looking at how you can reset your body's set point weight. Okay, I'll be discussing that. Um, some of the um, naturopathic holistic approaches to weight loss. It's not just about the diet. There's a lot more to it than that. And there's certain things, there's certain factors that will slow down fat, fat and weight loss. Um, and we actually, I actually touch on them tonight, but there's a lot more of that in the longer program. Um, now also, what are the elements to successful weight loss for the long term? And there's a lot of research and data based on, based on what is it that makes weight loss effective and for people to keep it off. Right. Then after the talk, we'll actually be doing the practical, which is a body composition test. You'll all get a report like this. This is an accurate measure. You know when you stand, stand on a set of scales and you and it gives you body fat and weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is sort of like a step up from that. It actually gives you a very accurate reading of half of one half of your body. Not only your weight, but the ranges for, for your weight, for your size, where, where, you, where you should be. But more importantly, your composition, your fat and muscle ratios. 
also your hydration and, the, and a few other things. So everybody will get a copy of this tonight. And then we'll come back at, at the end. I sort of touch on the diet in the first part of the talk, but after the practical, I go through the specifics and show you exactly what, what different diets. The, the diets that we're based on tonight are the Metagenic Shake It program. Their, their new program that's just, that's just come out. Um, and I'll be talking about all the resources and there's a huge amount of resources <coughs> from Metagenics that sort of help, that, so it can help you stay on your path and stay on your, and actually stay on your goals, working towards your goals. Okay. Um, now any questions at all? Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so like I said, two, two out of three Australians are overweight, almost two out of three. And 80% of people that lose weight will put it back all, all back on within five years. Mm -hmm. and a that's a, that's a, that's a, and, and a bit more, yes. So that's a pretty high percentage. Right? Now, the stigma with, with being overweight in our society is that you know, you're lazy or you haven't enough willpower. Can this many people lack willpower? You know, there's, there, there's more to it. Right? We all... Most people are aware of the benefits, the health benefits you get from actually losing weight. And it, you only have to lose a small amount of weight to get benefits with diabetes and also with heart disease risk, risk factors. A loss of 5% a five of your body weight reduces the risk of progressing from pre-diabetes to, to diabetes by 48%. Now that's a pretty big percentage. If you lose 10% of your body weight, um, you reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by, by about 21%. Now the traditional view on weight, weight loss, and probably still is, is if you have calories in and calories out, you want to put less calories in and put more calories out. Okay. Um, so you create a calorie deficit. While excessive calories do contribute to weight gain, it needs to have a more holistic approach to require to, to improve the outcomes for the, for the, for the long term. Well, there's more to it than just that. All right, so we put on some weight. We actually go on a diet and exercise to reduce weight. But what does your body do then? What does your brain do? What it does, it starts changing hormones. Start changing signal, signaling your body, your brain, if it has a certain set point of weight, tries to keep that weight on. Right? The body will increase appetite. It will, it will reduce your metabolic rate. Right? So you're sort of fighting against your brain a little bit. <laughs> All right, so you're getting this you actually get in this sort of vicious cycle where you go on a diet, your brain thinks you're going in, there's, there's a starvation, right? It goes into famine. Um, it starts reducing your metabolic um, rate. It increases your fat stores, thinking, oh no, there's, it's famine, right? And people start to get, this is when you get discouraged. Right? People aren't losing the weight they, the weight they want, but more, then what happens when you go off it, your appetite's huge, you eat more and you put more weight on than you actually had in the first place. <laughs> so this repeated cycle of yo-yo dieting. Huh? Now research um, into this idea that the brain has a set point for your weight and they think it might be something like the way our brain controls our blood pressure and temperature. Huh? Um, that the brain is always trying to get your body back to its whatever it thinks is its perfect or ideal weight. Mm -hmm. But this set point can be too high. Mm -hmm. So it's this the set point theory is basically saying that does your but is your body defending against fat loss? When you have a higher set point, 
if you start lowering your calorie intake, your brain triggers this starvation response. And that people that are overweight tend to have a higher set point. So someone that's, I don't know, what's 120 pounds in kilos? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, say, so say it's 60. If this person goes over, if this is the set point that the brain has, if the person goes over, starts going over that weight, the brain sends out signals via hormones and a whole range of things to say, you're full, you don't need to eat anymore. Right? So the person naturally doesn't eat much. If they go under their set point, they start to get hungry. Or their hunger increases. But if you're a person that has, the body has a set point, at 300 pounds, whatever that is, I forget what that is. <laughs> um, as soon as you start dropping under your set point, the same thing is, hap is happening. But you actually have a lot more weight on. Right? Okay. So you're always trying... Sorry, I've just doubled up here. So this starvation response can actually slow down, if not stop, weight loss. Okay. So the focus, the focus of any weight loss program needs to be more on lowering the set point rather than focusing on some crash weight loss quick fix. Right? But most, the majority, large percentage of people actually go, I want to lose the weight, I want to lose it now. Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. Yes. So by lowering your set point, there'll be, there'll be a pleasant side effect. If your set point is lowered, the side effect is you lose weight. And ideally, that should hold now because your body's comfortable at the weight. It's not trying to fight, it can fight to get back to what it thinks is ideal. The same way our body fights to get our temperature right or other, other sort of factors. So you've got to look at it is that whenever you start to reduce calories, whenever you're trying to, if you're willing yourself to eat or, or what you're not to mm. eat, right, mm. your brain is going just as hard in the opposite direction. <laughs> right? yeah, okay. <laughs> the harder you try, the harder your brain tries to override you. Right? And you can only last on sheer willpower for so long. Eventually, the brain's going to win, mm -hmm. right? because it's there to it's there to make you survive, and it, it, this is a survival response. <coughs> so this idea of set point sort of explains why why even people that are really successful at losing weight, so people like The Biggest Loser, mm -hmm. right? all those shows, a lot of them put all the weight back on. Mm -hmm. right? um, many people rapidly regain the weight that they. So she starts here, she loses it, goes up, down again, up, and sometimes the set point keeps going up as well. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the central focus is to change the body's set point for effective long-term weight loss. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions? Yeah. No? It's yeah. I don't know. Alright, now there are certain strategies you have to lower this set point. Um, there's six main ones, and I'm actually going to go over each of those. The first one um, is basically they found that people that ate a bland diet, no matter what the calories were, they lost weight. Mm -hmm. right? So this whole thing of calories in, calories out, right? This doesn't, this didn't apply to this. They thought, hmm, okay. What they're finding is that. Whenever you combine fat and sugar, sugar or carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates and fat together, that makes the food more palatable, tastes really nice. Right? So these foods, <laughs> these foods that have fat and sugar together right, are the ones that actually tend to increase the set. So think yeah. of a cake. Yeah, love cake. Love cake. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. So it's a, anything with the fat, the sugar, and making it really tasty with like salt and yeah. flavours. Yeah. So the, 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 the more palatable food, 
not only does it increase your set point, but it tends to make you want to crave it even more. Do you want more of it? So the first thing is to actually eat foods that have a lower, a low to moderate pal palatability. Now, whole foods tend to be less palatable. By whole foods, I mean less processed foods. The more processing something is that you eat, more than likely its, high, its, pal its palatability, you know, palatability is actually higher because it's got additives. It's got more things in it to make it taste better. So the trick is start reading labels. And that little tiny print of the, all the ingredients, that's the one you've got to read. The more ingredients, the more things that have been added, added to make it taste better. Um, if you read the labels of bread, just in the supermarket, if you read the huge list, right? most bread in the super, supermarket are classed as very processed. Right? All right, the second one is adequate protein. They found that by having protein every time you eat, protein actually increases your, your satiety. So it makes you feel full. It, it, by eating cat, oh sorry, my throat, I lost my voice last week, <laughs> still <laughs> fully, for four days. <laughs> All right. <coughs> by having adequate protein, you actually, in, uh, you actually reduce your calorie intake. Um, it increases the fat burning, and it actually also helps alter the set point. Okay. So protein foods, high protein foods are all the meats. <coughs> lamb, beef, pork, chicken, fish, eggs, and vegetarian sources, uh, beans, nuts, seeds, legumes. Okay. So that's all your proteins. All right. Now the third thing is flexible dietary options. They've found that if you have a particular diet and that's all you do and you stay on that, <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. I'll talk to you later. Yes, I'll talk to you later. Refresh. All right. Um, what was I doing? Um, okay, flexible dietary options. But there's been huge debate: who has done a low-fat diet, and who's done a low-carb diet. Yep. And who knows which is better? And there's all different theories. Across the board now, it's come in that either way is fine. Either way, you can lose weight on. Mm. I'm going to go through, after the break, the specific ones. But it basically comes down to, at the end of the day, your personal preference. Yes, there are some indications for health, different health reasons that different ones apply better. But I normally find people prefer one or the other or feel better on one or the other. Right? Who has done both, a low-fat diet and a low-carb? Which one did you feel better on? Low-carb. You like a low-carb? Mm. Mm. Neither. Okay. I've tried that many. You tried that many? <laughs> okay. Once I'm doing it, I'm fine with it. Yes. Like, while I'm doing it, I can stick to any of, any yep. of them and, and quite enjoy any yep. of them. Yep. get to that in a second. So. All right, it does come down to a personal choice. What I find, what, what I find with working with people, also blood type does play a role. Right? Has anyone heard of a blood type diet? Mm -hmm. yeah. Blood type O tends to be the meat eaters mm -hmm. and they tend to do well on the low carb, I find. Mm -hmm. right? Whereas the vegetarian, the blood type A's, are usually the fish and vegetarian types. They tend to do better, well they tend to like a low fat but that's a very generalised sort of state, mm -hmm. state, state, state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, and I find, yeah, I've got to have the, um, the low fat is better for me rather than, sorry, yeah. the low carb. The, the low carb is better for you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, um, you need to choose one or the other. You can't switch between the two. Right? It doesn't work. And you can't do both at the same time. I've seen a lot of people that try to do low fat and low carb, I'm saying, sorry, it doesn't work. Because your body uses either one as a fuel. Mm -hmm. So when you go low carb, your body converts over to using fat as a, as a fuel, as an energy source. Mm -hmm. All 
All right. So, carb so carbohydrates, what are carbohydrates? All carbohydrates break down to a sugar. Right? So all grains, starches, um, vegetables and some milk products, cereals, breads, rice, pasta, biscuits, biscuits, um, sugar, sweets. So you have, the, you have the refined sugar, but you also have the complex, sugar, mm -hmm. the, the complex carbohydrates as well. When you're on a low-carb diet, the only vegetables you, you, send, you tend to stay off are potatoes, and you limit your sweet potatoes and starchy vegetables like carrots and denser vegetables. Now, fats open into two categories, the healthy ones and the unhealthy ones. So your healthy fats are all the things like avocados, coconuts, eggs, organic meats and dairy, nuts, seeds, chia seeds, seafood. The unhealthy fats are the, hydro, hy, the, the hydronated oils, like margarines. Mm. Right? If you saw how margarine was made, you wouldn't eat it. No, no, no. Okay. Trans fats that are found in packaged foods and fried foods. And actually most vegetable oils have actually been heated. Mm. If you're going to use vegetable oils, you use olive oil or a cold pressed vegetable oil. That's really important. Mm. Uh, there's a recent study came out on the difference between olive oil and coconut oil. We used to think that coconut oil was better to cook in. Mm. We've now found it's actually olive oil, cold-pressed olive oil. Mm. Anyway, that's not the side. So you've got to pick which one are you going to go low in. Mm. For everybody, I say, look, it doesn't matter which diet you do. Just keep all your unhealthy fats out. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right, the, the fourth one, and here is the... Um, the way to change your set point is you have regular breaks from dieting. You actually, you actually have diet breaks for a minimum of two weeks. They found that two weeks is the most effective. So you do a diet for six weeks, whichever one you pick, low fat, low, low carbs, specific diet. But then you, you basically go into a cycle of two weeks off, two weeks on. Two weeks off, two weeks on. And this has been found to actually um, sort of trick the brain in, in, the brain doesn't think it's in starvation. So you start altering this set point. And they have found that the weight loss is as effective, if not more, than people that stay on a standard, I think it was more, yeah, more than people that stay on a standard diet. Now, of course, you don't, you don't go crazy. <laughs> No. Six weeks and it's Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. It is. It's actually five and a bit weeks. I say to people, look, you've got to try to stop your diet at least a week before Christmas. It's not going to work. No. But yeah, you could go the five weeks and the six, and then and then do, do this two week pulsing they call it, on off on off. On, on. Now you keep going on and off until you get to the weight you want. And then the third phase is what I term a wellness diet, which is what everybody can do. You come off the low carbs and low fat, but not extremely, and you, you moderate it all mm -hmm. into a, what I term, a lot of you have seen my wellness diets, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what you maintain. Now, the biggest thing they've found is that people who are the most successful at, at long-term weight loss are the ones that actually work with a practitioner or a group or then they keep going mm -hmm. even when they get to the point weight that they want they have some sort of check-in or some, yeah, something mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. <laughs> something that keeps you a tab of what is going on right? <laughs> because there's only a certain now there's a whole lot of other naturopathic side of it as well from a holistic approach which i'll go into a sec mm -hmm. um, it's not just food. Oh, 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 oh. Um, it's not just the food. Okay, there is a lot more to it than that. Okay, so that's number four. Now the fifth one is sleep. This is extremely important. The, one of the most important things is if you're not getting seven to eight hours a night, every night of sleep, your body produces hormones and a whole array of things that will stop or reduce your weight loss. Right? Poor quality or disturbed sleep causes a range of responses. So things like 
just that alone will increase your appetite. It will reduce your insulin sensitivity. What does that mean? Insulin is a hormone that main, its main job is to get sugar from your blood into your muscle. Into, it gets the sugar into the cell so the cells can use it. When you become insulin resistant, your cells ward off and fight off the insulin. So the insulin can't do its job, it can't get the sugar in. The brain goes, oh, there's this sugar, it's not getting into the cell, let's make more insulin. Mm -hmm. So you get higher and higher levels of insulin or you get insulin resistant. Um, when your insulin does, goes up or you become insulin resistant, you put weight on around here. The visceral fat, you, it lays fat down around the organs and this is the dangerous fat. Mm -hmm. So that's when you, so um, having insulin resistance is that's what it actually means. All right, so when you're tired, you you, you erode your willpower. Mm -hmm. um, you decrease your metabolic rate, um, and you reduce your desire to exercise. So sleep has a big impact on weight loss. Mm -hmm. And young mothers with little babies that are up all night come in and try to lose weight. I just say forget it. Mm -hmm. right? You're going to be up four times, four or five times a night with this child? I don't think so. Yeah. How about we have a wellness overall until you can get your sleep? It's really difficult with sleep though because like, there's no reason why I can't mm -hmm. get that amount of sleep. But like, there's no way I can sleep that amount of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if I go to bed at 10 o'clock, I'll wake up at 4 o'clock. Or I'll wake up at 4 o'clock because the hook bar is start at 4 o'clock. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And so it just like there's, there seems to be, I can't stay asleep for that long. Mm. Never have been able to. Yeah. And it's a whole other workshop. <laughs> 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 Just on sleep and stress. <laughs> often people, and I'll, I'll jump ahead here, often people with adrenal exhaustion, okay, will have issues with their sleep and waking up throughout certain mm. parts of the night. Right? So um, it's actually got to do with adrenal function and the HPA axis. Yeah. Mm. Which you can fix. Mm. Yes. <laughs> All right, now number six is exercise and time on your feet, right? just being upright off that desk. Right? Exercise lowers your set point, right? and of course, exercise is extremely important when it comes to weight loss. When you're doing a diet, the recommended amount is 30 minutes of moderate to high intensity, six times a week. When you have those diet breaks, when you go off for, two, off, off for two weeks, you increase your exercise a bit, up to an hour a day, five times a week. Mm -hmm. And this is all research-based. This is all, mm -hmm. uh, that's what they're recommending. And also, get up off that desk. Get a standing desk. Do you know, things where you're not sitting for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a whole lot of things about we all sit too much. All right, so the six, the six focus points... Uh, reduce the palatability of the foods that you eat, sugar and fat together. Right? Adequate protein at every meal, flexible dietary options, picking the one that you like or that you uh, feel good on. Regular diet breaks every two weeks. After that initial phase of six weeks, you go on two weeks off, two weeks on. But during those breaks, you still monitor, you know, those VLA, those VLA um, tests are actually a good way to check if you go off to make sure you're not putting on too much weight. You want to stay stable. Right? Mm. Adequate sleep and also exercise and time on your feet. Okay. Now, any questions with that? With the exercise, what, what type of exercise? I mean, brisk yeah. walking? Is brisk that... walking's fine. Right. Brisk. Enough that you're actually feel like feel like you're working out, but you can yes. still talk. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you don't have to go to the gym and. You don't have to go to the gym. And you don't have to go to the gym. No. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was always this thing about whether resistance or aerobics was better. Yeah. You know, like yeah. um, it keeps changing. Mm -hmm. Sally would know more about this than me. Um, but at, I think at the moment um, it's the aerobic part back yes. again. High intensity interval and, training. And the interval training, yes. Mm. And the books, the, the handouts I'm going to give you tonight talk about the high intensity interval training. Mm. Right? 
um, which is another part with diabetes. I'll talk about that later. Okay, so I can't cover everything tonight. It's quite a big topic tonight. How, how am I going on time? Where am I? 6.37. Okay, a bit behind. All right. Okay, so in the, um, in the 14 week program, if anybody is interested in that, I have. I have um, put your name down and once I have 12 people, I'll actually run a class. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll give you some handouts on that 14 week program as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'll talk about that at the end. All the same. All right, so there are a range of naturopathic topics that also have impact on your weight loss. I'm gonna have to skip these pretty quick, all right. The big one is stress, adrenal fatigue and stress, which can influence your sleep. Oops, sorry, what's happened here? High levels of stress hormones um, actually make it harder to lose weight and tends to accumulate out of range of waist or um, of the visceral fat. Your gut health and toxin load can sometimes be a big factor. When you burn, when you lose fat, um, where do you think our body stores our toxin load? When it can't get rid of it. In the fat. Mm. So as you burn fat, you're releasing toxin as well that your liver and everything else has to process and clear. And sometimes if, it, if, your, toxin, if your toxin load's too high, um, what will happen... I don't want this to It's skipping the skipping oh, without you. Yes. 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 Um, I cut and paste this from, a, from, from another workshop. Um, there's a tipping point that happens. That if your toxin load's too high, what will happen is that your body will stop losing weight. Mm. Can't process anymore. Mm. Yeah. Thyroid imbalances. 10% 10, 10 of the population have what's termed subclinically hypothyroid, meaning not bad enough for a, medi for a medical person to say, yes, you need to take medication, but enough mm. to cause symptoms. If your thyroid's a bit low, the number one thing is Inflammation is another one. Did I miss me? All right. So what I might do is just go through a little bit of the diet overview first. All right. Now I'll give out these. Now these are. This is from the Shake It program. Do you want to pass those around? There you go. And right. Yeah. Right. If you want to pass those out as well. All in there. And one of these is one. Here we go. All right, this Shake It program was developed by Metagenics. Um, and it's a whole program just in itself for, for weight loss, effective weight loss. The great thing about this program is that it has a huge amount of resources, <coughs> online resources. Yep, you're right. Okay. So you might want to take a note of that website, which is on those pamphlets somewhere, um, because you can download a huge amount of resources from, from, from there, including recipes. Right. They put out these recipe books. Um, there's a low-fat edition. And, oops. A low carb. Uh, they're about, I think they're about fifteen or sixteen dollars each, um, with all the recipes. So they, it comes as a complete package. Right. So this is the website, um, and you can go down and download a whole lot of meal plans, um, different handouts, different guides. Um, okay, recipe book. Right, now, the program itself, if you turn on to page five and six of your book, of this one, five, six, which is like this, okay? All right, the top part. Now, I've already explained this. This program involves an initial diet for six, for six weeks, and you choose either the low-fat or the low-carb. 
followed by the second phase, which is they call the pulse phase. And you keep the pulse where you go on and off, two weeks on, two weeks off, until you get to the weight you want. And then the third phase is you go on to the wellness program, which is an easier diet, by the way. Right? Eases up a bit. Now you can see there, there's two options. You've got either the low, they call it the ketogenic diet, which is the low carb, or the low fat. Now after the break, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go through specifically and explain both of those and how they differ. Overall though, is that you have only two meals a day. Two meals a day. Not six. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, certainly not six. You have two meals a day and you have the third meal as a replacement meal, like a shake. Okay. A protein shake. How many people have tried protein shakes? Yes. Yeah. Now, in, in the break, I've got about seven different protein shakes out there. Um, and they're all samples, so you can take a sample, have a taste. They're all there's there's metagenics, there's some of my whey protein. There's a whole range of different ones out there. Um, so you've got to find a protein powder you like. Mm -hmm. That's number one. If you're going to do a meal replacement, you've actually got to like it. Mm -hmm. right? No use taking something you hate. Um, I've got a chocolate one. I've got a chocolate metagenic ones out there. I've got a a soup. That's a protein soup, that's um, a vegetarian pea based one. There's pea protein out there. Um, and then I've also got the keto bars, which are not on that sheet yet, but you can have a taste of those as well. Um, each meal has adequate protein. And when they say adequate protein, they mean the size and the thickness of your palm mm. twice a day meat, chicken, fish, eggs, or the uh, vegetarian. You have three handfuls of vegetables or salad, not fruit, vegetables. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're on the ketogenic, you have one, you have, you add one of the healthy oils, a serving of the healthy oils. If you're on the low, if you're on the low fat, you add one serve of whole grain. Now, the third meal, and you can pick when you have that shake, whether you have it breakfast or dinner. Most people have it for breakfast. And then you have um, a snack. The ketogenic diet has two snacks a day. The low fat has one snack. And a snack is the size of three fingers. That's all. Mm. Right. That can be half a keto bar. It can be eight, eight or nine almonds. You have a small snack. On, like I said, on ketogenic, you have two. I'm sorry, low carb, you have two. And on the low fat, you have one. Not quite that much. <laughs> so, um, probably near a cup of day instead of six. Already. Yes. <laughs> They're sitting on my desk. Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> now, they've also found a particular, pro, a particular probiotic that when they've done studies on it, actually helps people lose weight. There's more about that in your booklet. Um, so they tend to recommend that people take this as well. Mm. Now, that, down the bottom here is your daily activity, which we've already talk, talked about, getting your seven to eight hours sleep. Your exercise, which we've already talked about, you need to do 30 minutes six times a day when you're, when you're actively doing the diet and an hour five times a week when you're on breaks. Water. Does it matter if you do more exercise and then... Yeah. Yeah. That's the minimum. That's yeah. So your water um, is, is also very, very, very important. Six, six to eight glasses a day. Especially if you're on the ketogenic diet, you actually, you do need more water. And last but not least is this staying on track. And this is where this program really sort of takes off. Um, they have a new phone app which hasn't been quite released yet. I'll just go up to it. Right. Now, I, I've always actually on the phone, it's been recorded. <laughs> I actually downloaded a prototype, some other prototype that wasn't ready yet. But anyway, I got to, I got to play, I actually got to play around with that app. Mm. Now, what it is, 
is it, it it's a tracker like you put all your food in and your water and your sleep and um, your weight um, and it gives you it gives you your breakdown which correlates with your diet that you're on if you turn over the page to page six oops. You can see that there is a percentage breakdown. If you're on low carb, you want 20% carbs, 30% protein, 50% fat. So the app will, will actually give you exactly what your percentage, percentages are. And the same for the low fat. More importantly though, that's, that actually goes via, that also comes via back, back to me and back to my dashboard. Mm. So I can send you little messages. Oh. <laughs> if you're having problems, I can quickly check what it is you're doing. <laughs> so when you do the, if you're doing the 14 week one, this is this is an ongoing thing that you actually do every day. The, one of the big factors that actually improves the outcome of weight loss is people who write it down. Write down what you're eating. Track you track what it is you're doing. Now, if you don't like phone apps. Even just writing it down in, in a journal. And the website's got a whole lot of journals you can print down and fill out as well. Right? Um, but this is a quite an exciting tool that Metagenics have actually about to bring out. Right? I think you buy it for a period of time, like 14 weeks. So it's, and it's usually through, you have to do it through a practitioner. Right? I, don't think, I don't think you can just download it. I think it's more buyer. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, now I've tried a couple of minutes there. The, um, the VLA test that we're, that we're about to do, and also those people that have done low carbs before, have you done it testing your keto, your, your, your ketones? Your ketones, your ketones. Okay. okay, all right, so what I'll do after the break is I'm actually going to go through that a little bit more specific. Um, is there any questions at all? What about intermittent fasting? Yes, we're going to get to that. Oh, okay. Um, intermittent fasting, the research is now about more um, putting your eating time mm. into a particular, mm. is it eight hour window, from 8am in the morning to 6 o'clock? We, yeah, we fast for 16 hours a day. 16 hours. We don't eat after 8 and then before 12 the day. Yes. And they've been studying the different times mm. and different ratios and the one they found was to actually start a bit earlier. Okay. And then the, the, the other one they found, the two, the two and five diet, yeah, right. there's all this sort of controversy, little bits and pieces about that as well. I mean, it, it works, but it, mm -hmm. the effectiveness was starting eating at eight and finishing by six. A certain, certain number of hours actually mm. has a high, um, a better effectiveness in weight loss. Mm. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so let's have a break, and we're going to start. What? A, no, before we start the break, I better explain how we're, what we're going to do next. <laughs> You're all going to have one of these sheets, right? and on this sheet, I'd like you to put your name and your date of birth. Right? Now, I have two helpers tonight. <laughs> okay. Now, Catherine here is actually going to be doing the measuring. We're going to measure you, your your weight, waist, wrist, and your height. And that's done in this room here. We'll have the scales and there's a measure there. And then you'll go into the next room where Sally will have the, vi the, the, v the VLA machine. And what, what it is, it's just a little machine that attaches to your wrist and to your ankle. You take your shoes off, lie down on the massage table. Um, and Sally will do the test and, and write the figures in. This all goes into a computer program and it gives you the report. So I hope you have enough time to quickly show everybody their, sort of interpret their, um, their report. So once you've got this and your goals, you might need to maybe change your goals once you see this <laughs> your report. Then we'll come back and go through the specifics. Okay? All right. Now the toilet is just out there. Um, and like, like I said, help, help yourself to the samples out there. Okay? All right. So thank you. Um, this ends um, the first part of Regain Your Body. If you're um, interested in this workshop, can you please comment 
or send me a message. Uh, the next workshop is at Mullumbimby next Thursday night. Uh, there's another one in Port Macquarie on the 27th. But please comment and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I finish the workshop. Okay, thank you. Bye.